The origin of the longest road goes back to a trip I'd made to Alaska in 1996. I happened to be in Kaktovik, a mostly Inupiat Eskimo settlement on Barter Island, a short distance off the state's north coast. I was walking around this little town when I passed the local school. As I looked at the American flag flying outside, I recalled that only six months earlier, I'd been on another island, Key West, Florida, where a lot of the school kids were of Cuban ancestry. What struck me at that moment was the vastness and diversity of the United States. It's as far from Barter Island to Key West as New York City is from Moscow, almost 6,000 miles. And yet those Eskimo and Cuban children pledged allegiance to the same flag. It seemed to be almost miraculous that a country so big, populated by nearly every race and ethnicity in the world, managed to stay in one piece and managed pretty well. What, I asked myself, held it together? Another thought crossed my mind. 150 miles west of Kaktovik was the town of Dead Horse, which lay at the end of the rugged Dalton Highway, the northernmost road in America. Key West at the end of the Overseas Highway is the southernmost point in the continental U.S. So with enough time, a lot of gas money, and maybe a little nerve, I could drive from the southernmost point to the northernmost. What an epic road trip that would be. At one end, I would look upon the Gulf of Mexico and the Southern Cross, and at the other, the Arctic Ocean and the Northern Lights. And possibly I would discover along the way what Inupiat Americans and Cuban Americans and every other kind of American had in common besides a flag. The idea stirred my imagination, but cicada-like, it burred itself into the back of my mind and stayed there, sleeping for 14 years. I can't explain why that happened. However, I do know what woke it up. My father died in March 2010, and although he was full of years, 94 of them, his passing got me to thinking about my own mortality. In a little more than a year, I was going to turn 70. In this day of long lifespans, we can tell ourselves, even into our 60s, that we've got time left to do the things we have left undone, but at 70, you realize that time is running out after all. If I was going to make that journey, I'd better do it while I still had my health and strength. If I've learned anything, it's that the things we don't do cause more regret than the things we do. I had another motive. I'd wondered on that day in 1996 what held our huge multiracial, multi-ethnic nation together. By 2010, a variation of the question was running through my mind. Was it holding together as well as it once had? America had been fighting two bitter foreign wars for years. It was suffering the worst economic recession since the Great Depression, and the strains were beginning to show. There were voices actually talking about secession. Voices from the mainstream, not the fringes. I had lived through the 60s, a divise of time in our history, but now it seemed more polarized than it was then. At least that was how it appeared in the media. Was it really that fragmented? I decided to find out by talking to as many people as I could as I traveled from the subtropical Florida Keys to the top of the continent on the shores of the Arctic Ocean. More broadly, I wanted to learn what the lives of Americans were like at a time of war abroad and economic distress at home. The Longest Road is the account of that journey, which I made last year, accompanied by my wife, Leslie, my two English setters, Sage and Skye. In a little under four months, we covered more than 16,000 miles in 18 states and two Canadian provinces, and spoke to dozens of Americans from all walks of life. The Longest Road is not a political or sociological tome. It's primarily the tale of a marvelous adventure with portraits of the people we met and their stories, many of which are fascinating. I have tried to write a narrative with as much wit and style as I have at my command, and it's my hope that this book will be, to the 21st century, what John Steinbeck's Travels with Charlie and William Least's Heat Moon Blue Highways were to the 20th.